This is the birthplace of genetics, the garden of a monastery in Brno. Nearly 150 years ago, Gregor Mendel used this garden for his experiments on the inheritance of traits in pea plants. These experiments brought forth two generalizations now known as Mendel's laws of heredity or Mendelian inheritance. The first one is the law of segregation, which consists of three parts. First, for each gene there are alternate versions, accounting for variations in inherited characteristics. One of these versions is dominant over the other. These different versions of genes that account for the same trait are now known as alleles. Second, an organism inherits two alleles for each characteristic, one from each parent. And third, during the gamete production, the two alleles for each characteristic segregate. We now know this happens during meiosis 1 in eukaryotic organisms to produce a gamete with a mixture of the organism's chromosomes. Which alleles are inherited is left to chance, assuring variation within siblings. Both alleles have 50% chance to be passed on to each sibling. Chromosomal crossover aids in increasing the genetic variation by producing novel genetic combinations. The second generalization is the law of independent assortment. This law states that all traits are expressed and inherited independently of each other. Actually, this is only true for genes that are not linked, which is mostly true for genes on different chromosomes. Not all traits segregate in accordance with Mendel's laws, which only describe the inheritance of traits linked to single genes on chromosomes in the nucleus. Mostly, the gene examined is dependent on different genes in the genome. But there are several other situations in which observed phenotypes in the progeny do not match the Mendelian values. For instance, not only the nucleus of a cell, but also the mitochondria and chloroplasts contain double-stranded DNA. These organelles are present in the cytoplasm of both the maternal and the paternal comete, but are lost from the latter one at fertilization. So traits found on extranuclear genes are determined solely by the maternal parent. The selfish gene theory holds that natural selection acts through differences in survival of competing genes, increasing the frequency of those alleles whose phenotypic effects ensure their successful replication. Normally, adaptations are the phenotypic effects that give alleles a better chance of being transmitted to descendants. These genes contribute to the fitness of the organism and have a higher chance to survive onto the next generation. But some genes gain their advantage not by contributing to the organismal fitness, but by breaking the Mendelian laws. These genes cause an intragenomic conflict by giving themselves a transmission advantage, to the detriment of the rest of the genome. These selfish genetic elements are harmful to the larger organism. Three main strategies for strands of DNA to distort its own transmission can be distinguished. In the case of interference, the transmission of the alternative allele is disrupted. This can be done by sabotaging the gametes not carrying a copy of the allele or even killing the offspring that don't. When selfish genetic elements get themselves replicated more often than other genes in the organism, we call it overreplication. And the third strategy is gonotaxis, where the genes can move preferentially to the germline, avoiding somatic cells.